Hi guys! <laughs> this is Shadow. He has come to say hi. He's our multi poo. Um, kind of new to the family. We got him about a year ago. But that's neither here nor there. Today he's going to help us discuss, well not really, he's just here to be adorable. But today we're going to discuss how to successfully live in a tiny home with one dog, two dogs, or more. Stay tuned! tiny home with our pup Phil. Phil is my boy. He is 16. I've had him since he was eight weeks old. Gotta roll some clips because he was just the cutest baby and he still is. <laughs> We did design the home kind of around Philly's needs, at least Philly's tempur dog bed that he had. We found that Philly transitioned just fine. He was literally used to following me around the house anyway. The only big difference was that this time he didn't have as much space to roam when I wasn't home. We found that as long as he had a designated space, his food bowl, his water bowl was in the same space every day, he did just great. Okay, so I am I do have dirt all over my shirt, um, and that's just because, you know, dogs. So if you have them, you get it anyway. Okay, so let's really quickly go over um, a few key things that made our tiny home journey with our pups very successful. We were out of the house for the majority of the day, which was good for the dogs because it kind of gave them some time to unwind before the crazy family came home. But then at the same time, you know, it can get lonely. We utilize a an app called WAG and I was able to get on-demand walks or schedule walks, kind of depending on what our schedule was gonna be like for that week. And we absolutely utilize that app. It was so awesome because if I knew if I was gonna get held up at the yoga studio or if I had to teach an extra class or whatever, I could literally boop, boop, boop on the app and I could have somebody at my door. You can also, you know, build a relationship with a wag walker and use that same person, which we tried to as well. But if they weren't available, they could always get somebody there for us. So that leads me to making sure your space is fluid for your dogs. So in order for us, especially if there is any, cumbersome around getting a task done, especially in a small space, sometimes it will go overlooked. And that's just because we are human. And in order for us to stay organized, and I'm speaking for my family specifically, we needed to make sure that uh, things ran properly. So for example, when we had the wag walker come to our home, we made sure that the leashes, the leads, they hung right at the right side of the door. So literally they would open the door and the leads would be right there. They could grab them and then we had a fully fenced yard around our tiny home so they could let the dogs out. They could run around and then leash them up to go on their walk which was, a, I think, a better um, situation than having a stranger come into the home, you're making the dogs nervous, it's already a small space. So just keep that in mind. As you are designing your home for your dog, make sure that they have a designated space. Make sure that if you can't be with them all the time and you need to introduce other people into the space, that you create an environment that won't be stressful to your animals because living in a tiny home like man it, it is it can be really difficult it's so joyous so i don't want to harp on the fact that like it's difficult sometimes i mean dude i live in a normal size house right now and my life is difficult sometimes like it's just what it is what it is okay so it's not just because it's tiny but what i'm trying to get the point i'm trying to get across just make sure that you've set up your home for success not only for yourself but for your doggo your kiddos whomever else is living with you okay so cleanliness this is a big one because a lot of the folks that we work with today, they don't wanna use chemicals in their tiny home. And I'm like, yeah, duh, I totally get that. I was absolutely the same way. Everything we used was an essential oil-based cleaner. The only thing that you really have to be aware of when you're introducing essential oils as cleaners into your home is which ones that your dogs are gonna be comfortable with and which ones they're not. So make sure that you research that. One of the formulations that I came to love was a Mark deterrent because when we brought Chuck home from the 
Uh, when we brought Chuck home from the situation of him being in the shelter, uh, once he got comfortable, he did kind of start marking everywhere. And we, and I didn't want to use any sort of chemical deterrent uh, just because the space is so small and I didn't want Philly around it all day. And like, especially not the, you know, the kiddos and ourselves. So what I did is I researched, you know, essential oils that are okay for dogs to be around, but maybe ones that they will not be attracted to. Citrus essential oils is what I use to formulate this recipe. And basically the dog deterrent was just a very, very strong orange peel essential oil. And then another one called Litsy Kubiba. And I could be completely mi mispronouncing that name. So I apologize for those of you that um, are really fluent with the essential oil name pronunciation. But basically they are two hundred citrus essential oils oils. I did put them uh, and mix in with some vinegar and some distilled water. Here's the recipe right here and I just put it all into a 16 ounce spray bottle. Obviously you give it a shake every time you want to use it but dude your home smells like cut up fresh oranges when you walk in versus pee which for me I have a nose like a bloodhound. It's like a blessing and a curse because I am very sensitive to anything I bring smell wise into my environment. So we're able to discuss, you know, that on that aspect with our clientele, like just make sure that you are introducing items into the home that one, you can handle, two, that they're healthful, and three, that they're safe for the dogs. So my guess is if you're a dog parent like I am, your dogs have a ton of toys. We did struggle in the beginning on, on where to really place all these toys for the pups because we would, you know, be out and about be like, oh my gosh, Philly would love this or Chuck would, you know, think this was excellent. So we had to get it for him. And then the toys build up and then, oh my gosh, I'm like tripping over them and I'm stepping on them. So what we did is we had a space underneath the couch that Josh built in and it was kind of just like a cubby hole couch that we built. Um, some of the space was used for our dirty laundry, so in a basket, and then the other two spaces were used, one as Chuck's bed, so we put his little dog bed in there and he loved to burrow in there, and then the middle space was used for, for keeping all of the toys in there, so it was just another basket. Philly does play with toys, but he's one of those dogs that like plays with you when you play with a toy. Chuck is one of those dogs that will go grab a toy and play with it, so it was a perfect situation because Chuck could have access Access to his toys now did he put them away no I mean he still scattered them around the house but when he wanted to play he knew exactly where to go to get his toy which was like the whole point so I that's just kind of going back to having those designated spaces within your design for your dog their food bowls their water bowls their beds their toy area and most important their leash leads come here come on all right all right, it's Chuck's turn. Chucky is here with us. This is Chuck. Uh, we rest, oh, sorry, what, what? Here we go, okay, this is Chuck. He has the worst breath of any dog I've ever known, <laughs> but he's so sweet. Um, so he actually came to us while we were living in the tiny home. I gotta put you down, bro, because your breath, oh. Um, Chuck came to us living in, while we were living in the tiny home, and he was a rescue, he came from an abuse and neglect situation. So when we adopted him, we had to go through some stuff. We had to teach him that like, hey man, we're here to only help you. We're never gonna hurt you. And eventually he warmed up to us and obviously, you know, a few years later, he's still part of the family. Okay, so lastly, let's cover food storage. So Philly, um, yeah, I know that there are some dogs that will jump up on counters and get into cupboards to get to their food. Fortunately, Philly it was never like that, our big Rhodesian Ridgeback. He has always been the chillest dog, uh, but when we did bring Chuck into the mix, Chuck was more so like, he was very food motivated because he was um, abused and neglected. So we actually, we had to go from storing the food in the cupboard where he could access it uh, up into the fridge and so because one of our dogs came from an abuse and neglect situation he was uh, rather territorial around food uh, which then made our other dog kind of territorial like wait 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 is there something you don't know man like should I guard my bowl too so um, we just had to make sure that like as they started to understand each other that we put them in a safe place one separated them from eating Chuck ate in the bathroom Philly ate in the living room and that we kept that food 
up high. So instead of having it in our cupboards, we just kept it up on top of our refrigerator. And even if the dogs got rambunctious and were playing and they bumped into the fridge, there was still no way it was going to fall down. Right, keeping their food above is just important, especially if you have, you know, more than one dog. And if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that like button. Oh, wow, 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 wow. One more item before I go uh, is the hair situation. Okay, so Philly, he has short hair, but the dude sheds all the time, especially living in the desert. It's like, it will be like super hot one week. And then especially as we're getting to fall to winter, like really hot one week and it'll be cold. And so like, he's always shedding, it seems like. One way that we kind of got around having mass amounts of hair everywhere was a handheld vacuum. And honestly, we say this to our clients who are going tiny is have a handheld vacuum. Um, big vacuums, they're clunky. They take up a lot of space. Handheld vacuums, we can literally wire a receptacle within a cabinet and it can, it can have its own little house. Again, with those designated areas within every facet of living tiny they are so important so we literally and still to this day for the blue blue the only way we clean is with a high powered hand vacuum it charges all night and then i'm able to use it during the day and basically like when you're petting philly or whatever and he's you know getting his hair everywhere it eventually goes onto the floor and then just with the vacuum get it real cleaned up really quick yes brooms are great too they're less expensive but i'm telling you a handheld vacuum especially living with dogs is going to save you so much frustration. Beep, beep. All right, well, I think that's all that we have for you today. This is Jillian and Shadow, and we are signing off. Thanks, guys. Peace.